Hey, Assembly! Onks teillä kivaa? So we have coming up for you Jaron Tell, who is a famous and pretty old, as you can see, he's losing his hair. Veteran musician from Commodore 64 to, do, to today's P games. So if you like gaming, what Jaron and other video game musicians started doing in late 80s and early 90s is what modern day music sounds like. It sounds like Nintendo, it sounds like Commodore 64. And that's because that music Simply put, is sweet music. So we got the Grandmaster himself performing together with his VJ Seaman today for you. So come up to the stage. It's time to rock out. It's time to nerd out. I want to hear you put out a big noise. Huutakaa kovaa ja kertokaa, että nyt on aika soittaa kovaa. Make some noise for Jerry. Are you ready for some real retro shit? <laughs> well, let's get this start, party started, man. When did you start to compose music? Uh, um, I started composing when I was uh, around... Well, first you have to define composing. Because when you're a kid and you start making your own melodies, that's composing. Yes. It doesn't mean that it's good, but I started composing at a very, very young age because I had a piano since I was uh, zero years old at my parents' house. And I like try to make melodies on it. Uh, that weren't my own, uh, so that was kind of composing. But when that, does it get good? But I know, uh, I remember specifically when I was around six years old, and I composed my, my first real tune, and I would play that tune every day, and I composed it on a piano. So that wasn't for a computer game or something. The computers were not in my life because they weren't there. Mm. And so, uh, age six would be the date. Okay, uh, it would be the year. I, uh, Pretty early. And uh, how did you involve to game music? Um, well, it was uh, when I was 12 years old. I got a Commodore 64, and uh, I was messing around with a, a ZX80 machine with bleeps and blobs just for fun. When I got a Commodore 64, uh, I got I played a lot of games, a lot of games, and I heard there was some potential to this music chip inside the Commodore 64 set chip. And I thought, hey, there's something really cool to be done with that. So I started programming in BASIC, like the BASIC programming format, just to try to, you know, play around with the SID chip. But then I noticed uh, after a while that it was too BASIC. It was not the machine code that you needed to implement it into something professional. But I didn't think professionally at all. Um, at 14, I actually got uh, to meet Charles Deenan and actually worked with him. I founded Manix of Noise with him. Um, he was actually working on some kind of player in machine code. Uh, his nickname? TMC. TMC. From Scoop and Manix of Noise, of course. Um, but anyway, I, I told him you should program this and this and this and this into the routine. He did. And then I uh, made demo musics, demo tunes. And we took those uh, to the PCW show in London and we handed them out to Electronic Arts, Ubisoft, uh, to all the, the big, well, the, at, th at that time, actually not so big companies compared to how big they are now. And since then we got 
orders to do game music, Commodore 64 games. But the, the trigger was listening to music from Rob Hubbard and uh, Martin Galway. And uh, other uh, MON team, team members uh, also was involved in game music, such as uh, Thomas Morganson. Well, they, they were uh, a bit younger than me. They weren't involved in game music per se at the time. Um, but uh, Lexity, Thomas Patterson, that's Lexity. I should say Thomas Agaskoff Patterson, mm -hmm. Haka Lexity. He did game music um, on his own. He was um, hired for some uh, projects. And Thomas Morganson was also hired for some projects. Um, in 1994, I got to meet uh, Lexity, I'll just say it by his handle, um, when I worked at Funcom in Oslo, Norway. And I asked him to join Maniacs of Noise, oh, naturally. Okay. Uh, what is there uh, also a group not named uh, Vibrance? What's the difference? Yeah, vibrance. vibrance, Vibrance. What's the difference between Vibrance and Maniacs of Noise? Well, Vibrance is a lot of other people too. It's like uh, they, they had this music group, um, Metal, MCK, JCH, uh, Drax, Laxity. Um I'm not sure if I'm missing, I'm probably missing some, some nicknames right now. But th those guys formed Vibrance before, even before they, uh, Thomas Morganson and Thomas Patterson joined Minix Noise. I asked them personally to join Minix Noise as well. Not leave Vibrance and come to Minix Noise, but be Vibrance and be Minix Noise. Okay. It was more for the demo group. Yeah, group membership was a serious thing back then. Actually, how did you uh, how did you like, meet each other usually? Uh, how did you like contacting each other and m making it? Are you talking about Lexity and Drex? Uh, probably them and uh, Charles I Dean. I mean, up to five musicians probably. I mean, uh, just oh, how, yeah, yeah, yeah. how you you were managing forming groups at that time, at the time of BBS and stuff like that? Well, if I, if I go from the, the start, uh, I met Charles Dean at uh, Venlo meetings. We had these uh, computer meetings, um, a bit like this, but very Smaller. undercut, very undercut. Uh, probably 150 people maximum. Uh, everybody had Commodore 64s there. I met him there and, uh, you know, we had demo, demo competitions and, and this, this is like the really early start of uh, yeah, the demo scene, so to speak. But I met uh, Charles there, and that's how we also formed. In the end, it came to form Minix of Noise. And um, yeah, that, that, that's how I met him. Um, for the other guys, uh, well, Thomas Patterson, Lexity. I met him when I uh, started to work for Funcom in 1994 uh, in Oslo, Norway. We had to make music for Pocahontas on the Sega Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo. That's that's he was hired. I was hired to do that, and that's how we got put so together. And uh, beforehand, I never met him, mm -hmm. and he knew about me. I didn't know anything about him. I knew that he was from Vibrance because I knew, heard some Vibrance music, and then I figured out, oh, that's the likes the that is from Vibrance and he's good. So that's how I got to meet uh, Lex T. Uh -huh. And we got really close as friends and musicians too. Actually, I'm the godfather of one of his children right now. Oh. That says enough, <laughs> <laughs> which is an honor. Um, but anyway, one of his best friends was uh, Thomas Morganson, Drax. And uh, he was on the phone all the time because we had like, we could phone freely. And um, well, I liked his music too. Um, when I got back home, because when I got back home to the Netherlands, then I, um, well, I got to talk to them a lot on ICQ and, uh, yeah, also by phone. And I thought it would be a good idea to ask them to join Minix Noise. And they both said yes, so. Sometimes I could not find the difference when I'm trying to guess who composed the music between you and drugs. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, um, well, uh, Drex, uh, initially, um, well, tried to, well, not copy my style, but it was very influenced by my style, but right now he, well, not right now, for years now, he's developing that into his own thing. It's like, when, when it gets jazzier than you expect, then it's yes. very likely Drex. And also, well, sometimes when it gets funkier than you expect, it's very likely Drex. He's very 
come into his own with the funky bass lines and very jazzy chords, very jazzy melodies. Yeah, so it's, um, I, I, I don't find it uh, hard to distinguish, but I'm really glad that he actually composes melodies the way I compose them. In a way, in a way. Recognizable, funky, but uh, he's, he's come into his own, definitely. But I understand where the thing comes from, where you think, because remember, I also learned from him. He didn't just learn from me, I also learned from him. He's a very brilliant musician, you know. He's a very brilliant composer. And it's like uh, Five Musicians was created for uh, gathering uh, experience between, uh, sharing experience between different musicians and styles. It's yeah, we were hanging out on MIRC. Mm. Yeah, um, that also actually uh, and it was initiated when I was at Funcom. We had uh, the first time internet in 1994. And um, we had this MRC channel and it was, we were hanging there for days and days and days and weeks and weeks and weeks. And at one point, Bass Hat, one of the five musicians, he said like, you're, you're good enough, uh, could you please join five musicians? Because one guy left and I don't know who. But uh, we were uh, Bass Hat, Necros, Hans, uh, me and... Melody. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good to have someone uh, with me to back me up. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a, that, that's how we met online. We, we actually never met face to face. I never made base at face to face, none of them. I've never talked to them <laughs> like I talked to you and you and you right now. Oh, that's, we are lucky. <laughs> no, but <laughs> no, it's just too far away and then we never met. That's all I can say. Um, but but we, we've, been, we've been in real close contact with MRC and ICQ and, and all that stuff, you know, and email. We did projects together just by using email, sending files back and mm. forth, and uh, yeah. Uh, so it's a very online experience, so to speak. So Lots of it. But if we'll uh, talk to Abyss uh, like we uh, conversated uh, uh, 15 minutes ago about inviting someone of them to next year. Hans, here, for instance. Hans van Vliet. Yes. yes. It would be really cool to have him here. Yes, so we can meet also. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Speaking know. of today's concert, so uh, right now you look a bit tired, but you like uh, you look very energetic at the same time, and I mean uh, I look tired on stage. Uh, no, right now. It's possible. Uh, right, right now, yeah. Right now, it's, it's getting uh, pretty late. <laughs> yes, probably. and it was a hefty gig. <laughs> yes, it was, but I mean. Uh, how do you like uh, making live gigs and how do you like... I live? love it! I mean, um, uh, my VJ, you've seen his uh, graphics mm -hmm. in the background, um, he once asked me in 2002 to play at Pac-Man Party 2, which was a gig uh, party with uh, mainly uh, Game Boy and Commodore 64 music musicians uh, at a place at, in his town. And he asked me, could you come over and play Commodore 64 sit chips? music, uh, well, sit, sit music. And I said, yeah, why not? Sounds like fun. So I went over there and that was the first gig we did. And since then we've done, well, a lot of gigs, a lot of gigs. We've been into New York City, into London, Copenhagen, uh, Stockholm, uh, now even uh, here in Finland, of course. Um, Switzerland, Brussels, a lot of gigs in the Netherlands. We were like selected for uh, some pop round, what they call it, so, like pop music round, mm -hmm. for uh, people they see as uh, potential, um, potentially really uh, well, yeah, uh, artists who can develop really well in the future. So we were playing like every uh, second day for a month. Wow, and that was that was that was so tiring. That was tiring. If you would have shut shut me in my face, I would. Be, uh, <laughs> I was so tired. And that was 8-bit uh, music? Yeah, like, yeah. It's like, 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 like this, this kind of gig but then with different tunes. I mean, I don't play all the same music all the time. Yeah. Well, Did what I do is... Um, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm not singing. I'm not playing a guitar. I'm not playing uh, keyboards at, on stage, which I actually want to do, I've got to tell you. But then I have to drag so much equipment with me, which is, right now is impossible. Then you have to go by van, you know, drive 2,000 kilometers and you can get, get that stuff in a plane, but you know, uh, the budgets were not, are not high enough to, for that kind of performance to do. How much music did you, did you make in your life? I mean, it was, I was uh, listening to the concert and really I, I, 
I haven't heard any of my uh, li lovely tunes of yours because <laughs> you mostly were playing uh, commercial, probably tunes from commercial from games and. Uh, what I played today was not no, commercial. No, 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 no. It's all that was all for just geeks. for fun stuff. Fun stuff uh, for gigs. Uh, no. Everything was just for fun, just for the gig or for, just Do for you know myself. How many music you? Did actually in your life. How, how, how many tunes? Um, yeah. How many songs I wrote? Yes. Poor, too many. Cool. A lot, a lot, a lot. I mean, seriously, um, I think 10% uh, of all my music has ever been released to people, and the other 90%, I mean, that's unreleased or unfinished. But uh, I don't release anything that's not finished. I tend not to do that unless it's in like a mix like this. I can uh, take a piece of music that actually fits in the mix and I release it like that. But I don't release it, I play it live and that's it. So I don't release it like on TuneCore or... Not yet anyway. People say I should, but I don't. <laughs> Maybe should. I should in the future. You should, probably. Yeah, I don't know. Definitely should. Uh, will you uh, plan to add some your uh, old tunes to gigs, for instance, uh, from uh, fast record models uh, you need. Yeah, the thing is that um, when I get hired f to do gigs like the these, mm -hmm. I'm actually hired as an 8-bit musician and uh, or a chip tune musician, but it's 8-bit musician. And would adding XM files would not fit this description. It would be like a module. Oh, I don't think so because, uh, for instance, Jeff, it's um, he's uh, organizer of. Uh, Ubiquitune.org. It's a site where you can download a lot of um, unique uh, 8 bit music yeah. by different musicians. And uh, they're releasing a lot of uh, new uh, albums. An 8 bit label. And when he yeah. playing gigs, he playing on his keyboard. And yeah. his friend, Megus, he also do, doing uh, 8 bit music, playing on guitar. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, and uh, is the arrangement made uh, on the background on 8 bits? Oh, no, I'm not saying that, um, that's, that's what I told you before, I would like to actually add uh, keyboards and stuff to, to the gig. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can play most of the melodies that I, uh, like right now, mimic with my mm -hmm. finger lights. Um, I can actually play most of them, not all of them, because, you know, the computer melodies sometimes are just, just, just too fast, but you can at least play the chords. Yes, and yes. But you know, dragging all that equipment with you, uh, by plane, uh, with taxis and stuff, that's really costly. And when I don't have the budget, when I don't get paid by okay. the venues or play, yes. I mean, it's, it's really, really costly. So um, I, was, I was actually booked very late into the, um, the planning of assembly. You actually had a hand in that. Yes. You did? Okay, that's good. But uh, you know, they ran out of uh, most of that budget. They, they still paid us pretty well, but you know, uh, there wasn't the budget to, to do the full-blown thing, like get, grab it, getting all this gear out. And you understand? So, yes, uh, but yes. I still still want to do uh, yes. that. And having XM files played would might be a good idea. Mm -hmm. That's true. But you know, if, if the if I'm getting hired as an 8-bit DJ, then I uh, don't want to. I have like samples, well not just if you, samples. If you I want to have at least some, some authenticity in the Commodore 64 Game Boy sound. If someone will ask you that it's not 8-bit, you can choke in 8-bit samples. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it's, 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 um, it's very uh, I, I would difficult like, question to describe what is 8-bit, I yeah. think. Well, it's, no, it's not a very difficult thing um, when it has 8-bit leads or 8-bit chords or at least has an 8-bit um, reality to it, then it's 8-bit. I mean, w I mean, it's obvious that I use uh, uh, 909 uh, kick drums and hi-hats, but the, um, most of the, the instruments I use are really 8-bit. They're created with 8-bit uh, uh, stuff, uh, chips. Yes. Yeah. So, so how do you describe 8-bit actually? I mean, is Amiga 8-bit? No. So, uh, Amiga? Yes. Uh, well, it's 8-bit samples, no, but no, not 8-bit, no. And well, unla unless, unless you emulate 8-bit waveforms. So you are... If you understand what I mean, like saw yes. waves, yes. Yes. Pulse, uh, waveform waveform modulation. And, I mean, what's your favorite... Uh, so, it looks like you consider 8-bit music like something from uh, chip, 8-bit chip, right? Uh, yes. 
like uh, seed or something. And yes. Yeah. What's your favorite uh, like uh, a bit source? I mean, do you Commodore 64 set chip? Definitely, mm. hands down. Uh -huh. Okay. Hands down, that's definitely my machine. I see. Yeah, it's, uh, it was full suite simulation, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, full suite simulation. No, it's... Um, but I like having uh, the limits of, for example, uh, Game Boy. It doesn't have all that fancy stuff that a SID has, but then you even have to be more creative in your melodies. For example, if you listen to Co uh, Robocop 3, that was actually composed on a Nintendo Entertainment System. That wasn't composed on the Commodore 64. And they had to be really creative to make it sound really powerful and you know use the, the oscillators right, having a good melody, good chords, uh, some good drums that you can emulate with the, the third voice, which has a, a very low, shiny uh, bass, and, and you can make kicks and snares with it to get, combine it with the noise generator. So that really came out well, melodically and har harmonically. And then I put it to 64, and on 64 it sounds better, I think, personally, because then you have this uh, pulse width modulation, you can use filters, which I actually used on the whole track. But um, I would not have been able, well, somehow the inspiration came when I had to write this on a Nintendo Entertainment System chip, which only had these three, three very simple voices, very simple channels and a noise channel. So you were feeling comfortable while uh, while composing it. I mean, uh, did, did you ever feel yourself like you have to cut uh, cut uh, your features, cut your melodies when you are putting something composed in your head into the some some particular hardware with uh, voice limiting and stuff like that? And <laughs> I think you don't have polyphony and stuff like that. Yeah, when, when, you, when you are more limited, you have to be more creative. That's a very simple statement, but it's very hard to do. If you have, um, like, okay, I, I will mention the SID chip. It has really powerful features. It has filter, pulse modulation, combination. You can make arpeggios that are bloody brilliant. You can actually work with sound instead of melody. With a Game Boy, you can't work with sound because you only have these simple uh, FM waves, you know, you have like this um, pulse width modulation on 12.5%, uh, 25%, 50%, and then 75%. Blah, blah. But that's it. That's it. That's all you have to work with. Then all, the only thing you can do is use the pitch uh, to its own right. Uh, and the way to use pitch is making beautiful uh, arpeggios, harmonies, uh, and beautiful melodies or bass lines. Uh, that's, that's, you, don't, you don't have much to go on. Oh. So, uh, uh, I got a question, so uh, uh, speaking of hardware limitation, uh, I just noticed for myself probably that when you're working with particular uh, like software or particular platform, it just dictates you the way you compose your music, the style probably. For example, when I just get deeper into tr tracking music, I was like a fond of punk. I was absolutely loving making my guitar, uh, rhythm guitar lines in the tracker with all those uh, volume ramps and stuff like that and programming bass lines and for Commodore 64 it's probably the same. I mean, a lot of musicians uh, so, uh, who, who do the 8-bit music, they do it like electro or something like that. So, I mean, do you do feel something like uh, you like uh, Commodore 64, so does it dictate you the way you're composing? So you probably not bring in a lot of uh, polyphony into your uh, tunes, or you're not making like rich parts uh, in your arrangements or something like that. And if you could do everything you want to, if you have everything at your disposal, what style would you prefer to compose? Uh, Okay, yeah, well, the thing is that um, right now I'm using Renoise for, as a tracker and there's no real limitations to what I can do. What I noticed is when, uh, that was really early, when I got, got to, uh, got around to being able to do anything I wanted to do, um, the first tunes I wrote were too messy. I tried to do too much. 
because I was like, whoa, I can do, I can have endless channels now, and then you overdo it. But that's that's a learning curve too. I mean, you don't have three channels; you have like endless channels. It started, of course, with like going to Fast Tracker, 32 channels. Still wasn't enough, I got to tell you, because uh, you would use two channels to make a stereo sample sounding thing. But the uh, ones I got around to like really noise, endless, you know, that, that's too much. And then you tend to go overboard with it. But okay, anyway, um, I got the terms with that. You, you, you live, you learn, you produce something and you think oh, that's too much. Um, the style, I mean, I, I don't like to limit myself to one style, but the style I like most is uh, making something that's uh, a little bit like a combination of dance, a little bit of funk, um, preferably very melodic, if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. Very recognizable melodies. Um, and, and this is something that you haven't heard from me, uh, with lyrics. Because I actually have worked on uh, something like 70 songs, which are destined to be on an album, my own album, uh, with my own lyrics in it and my own singing in it. Your own lyrics? Yes, yes. Wow. But the, the funny thing is I can't show it here because I don't have it with me. I, w I would actually love to play something right now so you could have a preview, but you know I don't have it with me. So. But uh, yeah, I would say dan dance, trance, funk, melodic, harmonic, and with lyrics. And but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's, it sounds like a, a strange combination, but it's not a strange combination. It's, uh, well, it's it's very very much my own style. It's, it's, like, it's like it's like like when I you, when when I make a, a piece of music that uh, most people say, I, I okay, I just make it because I like it the way I. Wait, why wouldn't I make music that I won't like myself? But most people say when you make something, you can always hear it's you. Yes. Yeah, that's the thing. But uh, that, I think that would be best describe my style. But I, I, mean, I can also write ballads, and I can write rock, and I can write jazz, and I can write whatever whatever is required for my profession. Because I have to write music for, for games, and you know, every game is set in a, in a different atmosphere. So if I have to write classical music, I can write classical music. Sure, it would st we'll still have my my print on it. You will still hear it's me, but it's it's different from trance or from uh, well dubstep. The <laughs> <laughs>
By the way, do you plan to do music for something like a movie? This would be... If I get asked to do mu uh, music for a movie and I get the proper budget, because I won't do... I wouldn't like to do uh, like the music for a B movie or something and get not, not get paid enough and then have to do something really fast in, a, in like a month mm. instead of the proper time that stands for that. But yeah, I would be open to that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, when, when you do something like that, you have to be either uh, putting all the time and effort and, um, and get the proper amount of money because you have mm. to have an orchestra playing it. I mean, that, that's the way it is. Mm. I mean, you can write music with uh, sound libraries. I know that mm. and you can do it really well. But that would require even more time, because you have to. Right. If you, if you would work with sound libraries, like you have these um, violin uh, libraries, they sound like real violins. If you edit them well, but you have to edit them really well to make them sound not like synthesizers. Mm -hmm. So that would take a long time per instrument to do that. So instead of having a live orchestra playing it, which is just giving the sheets of paper, the music notation, and let's play. This is the, yeah. Uh, then you can do everything in one take. But if you have to do that uh, as one person without an orchestra, then you have to record every part by yourself with libraries, sample libraries. And if you would uh, try to mimic a 60 piece orchestra, you're doing 60 parts. Oh. You understand this? Yes, yes. And that takes a long time. For uh, if a movie is like one and a half hours, that's one and a half hours times 60. But you consider uh, movie music as uh, something classical? Um, well, no, not necessarily. But um, most uh, movies do feature classical music. If you look at the, um, this is a very good example. Jerry Goldsmith made the music to Rambo 3, Rambo Part 3. He com combined uh, classical music with synthesizers. And he did it in such a brilliant way. But believe me, there was a big budget behind that. But I believe in the combination of electronic and classical. Just take, take the best of both worlds to create something that's, yeah, that, that's, that makes the sound that you want it to sound like. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a, a, a pro just classical music uh, guy, but I'm a pro orchestra guy. Orchestras can make this dynamic sound that it's very hard to uh, create with synths, but synths can make a very deep, uh, yeah, I would say it's very direct sound that orchestras can't. But if you combine those two, you can come to a very yeah, so, so great it was, sound. It was, it was you who orchestrated the orchestra uh, which played your... Uh, no, actually no, that was Rob Hubbard. Oh. Rob oh. Hubbard was the guy, uh, I asked him, I knew before he became a very famous uh, Commodore 64 composer. He actually was arranging uh, music for orchestras and big bands and, and bands. Uh, and then he got uh, famous with the Commodore 64 music. So he actually was an arranger. So when this project came up, then the first guy that sprang to mind was like, let's have Rob Hubbard arrange this, because he's very good uh, at, at music in general, but also in arranging it. So he did that. All right, let me check this out. Robocopa. Robocop! Let me see, Robocop 3? Yeah! There we go. Speaking about uh, the classical games, Robocop 3, uh, 
I've seen that you commented a video on YouTube. Uh, some guy put a cassette on the deck player and played the Robocop song. Uh, song. So this guy is actually uh, a big fan of uh, old Nintendo games, uh, and the, in his uh, videos he talk uh, about his uh, childhood or how he, how he played these games on uh, a clone system because we didn't have uh, an official uh, Nintendo game consoles and uh, he played on black and white small TV and uh, tried to understand what's happening and uh, so now he has everything and he talks about the past and uh, about your past uh, when you were a uh, young guy uh, like 15 years old yeah more or less uh, what did you think uh, what will come to you what will change what uh, plans did you have for what future did you imagine? What vision did I have? At the age of 15, I had a vision that I would be um, composing music for Commodore 64 games mm -hmm. and that I would be good at it. I would be recognized for it because I, I spent every waking hour almost behind that computer just to get good at, yeah, get, at least get someone to write a good player, Charles Dean in this case, and uh, yeah trying to make the real effort to, to get good at that. Um, I didn't foresee something like sitting here uh, 25 years later being interviewed about uh, the stuff I did back then. I didn't envision that. I didn't envision playing live in front of uh, 5,000 uh, whiz kids, so to speak, or gamers. Uh, no, I, didn't, I, I, didn't th I don't think many people can uh, look that far ahead. But, um, yeah, the thing that, that kept uh, pushing me forward was uh, trying to make good music. It doesn't matter for what platform. I mean, right now we have iPads and um, smartphones and stuff, and, and I love it because most of the music is streaming. So you can do anything uh, you want. But the thing is, uh, I think when you're a kid, you want, you have a dream. You know, you, you want this and that and that, and then you work towards it. But I think that actually never stops because if you, if you, find yourself on a new platform there's there's like a whole new yeah there's a, whole, a lot of a lot of more possibilities i mean computers now are quad core octa core or whatever there's there's like no limit in processing power so you can actually still you can go back to for example synthesis which is possible now i mean real time synthesis in a game is a possibility it's not being done yet but it's uh, something that i look forward to actually experimenting with not that it will be in games Pro maybe it does maybe it doesn't but it's, um, it's always, I mean, I think, uh, I think that's with everything with life. You, you, you hope for something. You want something new. Just uh, going, going about your business, just doing that. Same old, same old, same old. That doesn't work. You have to try to reinvent yourself. I mean, that keeps uh, being creative interesting. That's the best answer I can give you, I guess. Yes. <laughs> and what's the secret of success? What about secret of success? Yes. Your opinion. Um, <laughs> musicians. I would say uh, hard work, dedication, and listening to people. Listening to people. Feedback. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Okay. Okay. And uh, great so, so who Do you want to greet someone? We will share this interview in the future. Oof, the well, part. I think I, I, it would be it would be very silly for me to greet so, someone. Um, I would greet my brother. Now, if I start greeting people from the scene, then everyone I yes, leave yes. out. <laughs> I'll, I'll like to greet anyone that was involved with uh, with the scene or is involved with the scene, and um, still uh, has a heart for it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You're very Thank welcome. You for Thanks for having me. <laughs> Cheers. That's all.